Hi friends, welcome to the Daily Current Affairs by Neo IAS. So today on 11th March 2019, we are going to discuss the topic Pulse Polio Program 2019, National Crime Record Bureau, then Bureau of Energy Efficiency that is BEE, then SWIFT Current Affairs Capsules and our daily sessions of MAP Aided Program and PQR. So our first topic is Pulse Polio Program 2019. So the President of India launched the Pulse Polio Program of 2019. Let us discuss more details about the program. We know that the main objective of this Pulse Polio Program is to sustain polio eradication from the country. So in this Pulse Polio, uh, polio Program, Polio drops are given to the children below 5 years and actually it is a government initiative and its aim is to sustain polio eradication from the country. That, that is its main aim. So the polio eradication program in India, it aims to protect children from this disease in two ways. That is by conducting two na nationwide mass polio vaccination campaign and uh, two to three sub-national campaigns every year. So by conducting two nationwide mass polio vaccination campaign and two to three sub-national campaigns every year. So in 2009 in India, half of the number of wild, wild polio virus that is WPV cases in the world were detected in India. But we were able to reduce its amount that is by 2011 India brought polio infections down to zero. Okay. So the according to the last reported case of wild polio in India they were in West Bengal and Gujarat on 13 January 2011. Okay. And on 27 March 2014, the WHO, it agreed or it claimed that the India is able to eradicate polio. So, on 27 March 2014. So, actually we were able to eradicate the case of wild polio, but some cases of this VDPV, that is vaccine derived polio virus, it was uh, reported in Delhi as India stopped transmission of indigenous wild polio virus. It is still considered as polio free. So we were able to eradicate this polio up to an extent. But some cases of this vaccine derived polio virus was reported in Delhi. Clear? Then let us see some related initiatives. We all know that about universal immunization program, then mission Indra Dhanush. These are some related initiatives that is uh, first one that is universal immunization program and is focusing to protect children from more number of diseases. So in that polio is also included. So including that some other diseases are also eradicated and several new vaccines like pneumococcal va conjunctate vaccine, then rotavirus vaccine, measles rubella vaccines were all also invented along with this polio vaccine. That is this universal immunization program. And another thing is that uh, along with this, with this polio uh, vaccination, the government has also introduced the injectable inactivated polio vaccine into its routine immunization program to provide additional protection to children. Okay. So, injectable inactivated polio vaccine is also uh, implemented into its routine immunization program. Then another thing is mission Indra Thanush. So, we have already discussed about this mission Indra Thanush in our earlier classes. Please do check about this. And this mission Indra Thanush, we know that it is to accelerate the goal to achieve more than 90 percentage of full immunization coverage. 
okay then the strengthening of immunization program has contributed a significant change that is a significant change in the decline of infant mortality rate from 39 in 2014 to 32 we were comparing this in 1000 live births so in 2014 it was 39 and it was decreased to 32 in 2017 okay that is the great strength of this immunization program. Clear? Then let us discuss some points regarding polio. So, polio, which is also known as poliomyelitis, it is a very highly infectious viral disease. It is caused by polio virus. It mainly affects uh, children, that is, young children below 5 years. And this virus, it is, uh, we know that uh, the initial symptoms of this polio disease is fever, fatigue, headache, vomiting, uh, stiffness of neck, etc. And we know that this uh, virus is transmitted by person to person and it spread mainly through fecal oral route. Okay. Or less frequently by a common vehicle that is contaminated water or food. They can act as a common vehicle. And this once this bacteria, in, oh, sorry, virus enters into our body, it multiplies in the intestine okay and from where it can invade the nervous system and can cause paralysis okay that is in 1 in 200 cases the disease causes paralysis which is often or permanent known as acute placid paralysis so in 1 in 200 cases this paralysis case is detected and is known as acute placid paralysis. And another severe case or acute case is bulbar polio. So, in that this polio virus it attacks the nerve cell of the brainstem and uh, hereby the patient uh, he felt reducing breathing capacity or he felt a very difficulty in breathing and also causing difficulty in swallowing. That is an acute case actually that is bulbar polio. So, we know that there is no cure for polio. So, it is better, it is good to prevent the disease. So, there comes the importance of this immunization. So, we have discussed two terms that is bulbar polio and also acute flaccid paralysis. These conditions are associated with polio. Clear? Then, our second topic is National Crime Record Bureau. So, why it came in news? Because the National Crime Record Bureau, that is NCRB, it celebrates its 34th inception day. So, we know that this NCRB, it is mandated to empower the Indian police with information technology and uh, it is also responsible for collecting, maintaining and analysis of the crime data of the country. And it also facilitates the investigating officers with updated IT tools and information in investigation of crimes. Okay, that will help them in uh, investigating particular cases. It was set up in 1986. And another thing is that it functions as a repository of information on crime and criminals. So, as to assist the investigators in linking the crime to the perpetrators. And we know that this NCRB, it is the nodal agency for authentic source of data on crime, accidents, suicides and prisons for policy matters and research. So, it is a nodal agency and it was set up in 1986. And its main function is to empower the Indian police with information technology and new new updated IT technology. And we know that it is also the apex nodal agency for uh, all fingerprinting related matters. Okay. So, it acts as the apex nodal agency for all fingerprint related matters including accreditation of fingerprint print experts in the country and this bureau is implementing and it also monitoring agency for 
implementation of crime and criminal tracking network system that is CCTNS. So, it is the implementing and monitoring agency for CCTNS. Actually, this uh, CCTNS means it is a mission mode of mission mode project under the national e-governance plan of government of India. And another thing is that it aims at creating a comprehensive and integrated system for enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of policing in the country. So, it mainly it helps the police force and this NCRB it also imparts training in information technology and fingerprint signs for the Indian police officers as well as uh, foreign police officers. So, the main function it imparts training in information technology and fingerprint signs for Indian police and uh, foreign police officers that is its main function. Okay. Then our next topic that is Bureau of Energy Efficiency. It is a topic from eco uh, economy. Then why it came in news? The power ministry it added two more electrical appliances that is microwave oven and washing machine to be assigned a star rating based on their energy efficiency metrics. Clear? So, the star labeling program uh, have been formulated by the BEE that is Bureau of Energy Efficiency as a part of its mandate under the Energy Conservation Act 2001. And we know that this BEE it assists in developing policies and strategies within the, pri within the primary objective of reducing the energy intensity of the Indian economy. Actually, its primary objective is to reduce the energy intensity of the Indian economy and it is a statutory body under the Ministry of Power and it also developed the, you know that, it also developed energy performance index that is EPI and the government of India, it has set up this BEE on 1st March 2002 under the provision of Energy Conservation Act 2001. Okay. And another function is that it coordinates with designated consumers, then designated agencies and other organization for what? Uh, basically to identify and to utilize the existing resources and infrastructure and thereby help, helping in performing the functions assigned to it under the Energy Conservation Act of 2001. Clear and uh, it has got some ratings and the building ratings are based on a 1 to 5 star scale. That is all about this BEE. Coming to our next topic that is SWIFT. It is also a topic from economy and why it came in news because the RBI finds 36 banks for SWIFT fault. Okay, let us see more details. This SWIFT it stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. So, it is the global messaging software. Please note that it is a global messaging software and it enables financial entities to send and receive information about what this financial transaction in a very secure, standardized and reliable environment. And we know that the majority of the international interbank messages use this SWIFT network and it is a, a cooperative society under Belgian law and is owned and controlled by its shareholders. And another thing is that it is a global member owned cooperative and the world's leading provider of secure financial messaging services. And the main function as I said it provides a messaging network and that uh, financial institutions they use to securely transmit uh, information and instructions through a standardized system of codes. Okay, so it's a they or it provides a messaging 
network. That is the main function of this SWIFT. Then its headquarters is located in Brussels in uh, Belgium and it does not facilitate fund transfer rather than it send payment orders which must be settled by the correspondent accounts that the institutions have with each other. And another thing is that it does not hold funds or manage accounts on behalf of the customers. And uh, still many of the Indian banks are yet to adopt it norms that is swift norm and this uh, cybox it is the annual conference that is hosted by this swift which specifically aimed at the financial services industry and the swift it is published it published a detailed description of the mandatory and advisory customers security controls Okay, publish a very detailed description regarding the mandatory as well as the advisory customer security control and uh, this framework which they publish, this framework it describes a set of controls for its customers to implement on their local infrastructure. Okay, that is all regarding this SWIFT. Then in current affairs capsule. Our topic is long march. This long march, it is a carrier rocket series. It is developed by China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation that is CASC and it is responsible for about 96.4 percent of all the launch missions in China and uh, this, so it is the China's long march 3B rocket. And it is regarded as the mainstay of the country's space program since 1970. And this long march it has successfully completed its 300 launch. Clear? So, the China's rocket series that is um, developed by CASC, it that is called this long march and it has successfully completed its 300 launch. That is the news. Then our second topic in current affairs capsule is Karunya Arogya Suraksha Patthadi. So, the Kerala government in order to roll out the Karunya Arogya Suraksha Patthadi that is KASP on April 1st, it mainly covers two things that is it cover injuries during suicide attempts and also alcohol induced diseases. Please note these two points that is it covers injuries during suicide attempt and alcohol induced diseases. So, usually our insurance uh, parties they will not cover such things, but Kerala is thought to be the first state in the country to introduce a public insurance scheme incorporating these two risks. Because these uh, two risks it, uh, it is not included in any other insurance schemes or health schemes. That is its importance. So, Kerala is the is thought to be the first state in the country to introduce a public insurance scheme incorporating this to risk. Clear? Then in map aided program, we will be dealing with island of Lampedusa. So, this island of Lampedusa, it is the largest island of Italian Pelagay Islands in the Mediterranean Sea. So, why we are discussing this? Because uh, it was in news in relation to the migrant crisis in the Mediterranean. So, it, it actually it is the it least southernmost piece of land and this Lampedusa island it is the largest of the Pelagi islands that is a, uh, it is an island group and it includes Linosa and Lampion islands and uh, this its length its length is about 7 miles that is 11 kilometer then it has a width about 3 kilometer and it rises to a 436 feet that is approximately 133 meters above the sea level. And uh, administratively this Lampedusa is a part of autonomous region of Sicily in Italy 
and as I said, it is located in the Mediterranean Sea between Malta and Tunisia. Please note, it is located in the Mediterranean Sea between the Malta and Tunisia. That is 105 miles southwest of Licata, that is in Sicily. So, administratively, this Lampedusa, it is a part of the autonomous region of Sicily in Italy. So, here you can see the island of Lampedusa, which is located between the um, Malta and Tunisia. Okay. So, here you can see the island of Lampedusa in the Mediterranean Sea. So, in prelims question revision series, we will be discussing a question that is, in the context of global oil prices, Brent crude oil, it is frequently referred to in the news, what does this term imply? So, it is a question asked in 2011. So, options given are first, it is a major classification of crude oil, then second, it is, uh, it is sourced from the North Sea, then uh, third, it does not contain sulphur. So, which of these statements given above is or are correct? Then our options are A, 2 only, B, 1 and 2 only, C, 1 and 3 only and D, 1, 2 and 3. So, the question is related to Brent crude oil. We know that this, uh, we can simply classify this crude oil into three types that is sweet crude oil, sour crude oil and Brent crude oil. So, this classification is based on the amount of sulphur. That is the oil which contains sulphur amount less than 0.5 percentage, it is called sweet crude oil, less than 0.5 percentage. And if the sulphur content it is more than 0.5 percentage, it will be called sour crude oil. And our Brent crude oil, it is having a ground that is, uh, it is having sulphur content around 0.37 percentage. That is, that is it can be included in the sweet crude oil this Brent crude oil, it is a sweet crude oil too. So, it is of three types that is sweet crude oil, sour crude oil and Brent crude oil. And let us see more details regarding our Brent crude oil. Its main source is from North Sea and uh, its main manufacturer it is also known as the Lenten Brent or Brent Petroleum and Brent Blend. And this largest of the several key classifications of the crude oil comprising of uh, Brent crude Portis, Brent, Sweet, Light Crude, etc. It is the largest of the several key classification of crude oil. And it is used to price two-third of world's traded crude oil supplies. And the production of petroleum from Africa, Middle East and Europe flowing to West, they tends to be priced relative to this oil. That is, actually it forms a benchmark regarding the uh, 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 flowing of this crude oil from west to uh, that is from Africa, Middle East and Europe flowing west tends to be priced relative to this oil that is it forms a benchmark. And another thing is that though uh, the large part of the Europe now obtain their oil from Russia. Okay. Let us see some of its characteristics. It is a light crude oil. And as I said, it contains um, approximately 0.37 percentage of sulphur, which classifies it as a sweet crude oil. And uh, another thing is that it is uh, appropriate for the production of gasoline. And it is usually refined in the northwest Europe. And uh, the trading symbol of Brent crude is LCO. LCO, that is the trading symbol of Brent crude. Okay, so coming back to our question, first it is a major classification of crude oil that is correct, then it is sourced from North Sea, it is also correct, then third one it does not contain sulphur, that is wrong because the classification itself is based on the amount of sulphur it contains. Okay, so the third one is wrong, so our answer is uh, B, 1 and 2 only. So answer is B, that is the answer, okay. So, that is all for today's session. Thank you for listening. Good night.